Gary Seibel will pick up the action and call it for us, wire to wire. Take it away, Gary. Thanks, Bruce. And as Stan said, Keystone Wallace could be very, very tough from the rail. You might have to watch out for Hurst. Cheery hello on the outside. And, of course, Caesars jackpot post position number six. It could be very tough. Keystone Wallace gets the trip. She's got a good closing kick. You never know what can happen. This field is in motion. <coughs> Now they're straightening out onto the back stretch for the Breeders' Crown three-year-old Philly Pace. Field of eight going to the post, and almost 300,000 on the line. They're off and facing on the inside, going for the lead. That is Concertina. Keystone Wallace leads well at the rail. In between horses now, going up. Caesars Jackpot comes away third. You drive it right there, fourth. Queen Isabella away fifth. In sixth, Uptown Swell, followed by Tyler Town and the early trailer, Unhurried. It's Cheery Hello. Midway through the paddock turn the first time on top, Concertina. And now they drive to the quarter and they reach that marker in 28 and 3. And Caesars Jackpot takes him there as she looks to clear for Mickey McNichol. And now she does. It is Caesars Jackpot on top, little more than a lane. Concertina second, Keystone Wallace at the rail. Now swings to the outside and you drive it as cover in fourth. Queen Isabel closes the gap in fifth. Sixth on the rim, that is Uptown Swell, followed by Cheery Hello. And Tyler Town now trails. And as they race over to the half, on top, Caesars Jackpot. Keystone Wallace coming to her on the inside. Concertina third, you drive it fourth. The half in 58 and two fifths. And now they straighten out onto the back stretch. Caesars Jackpot has the lead by a neck. Keystone Wallace draws on even terms. On the inside, Concertina third, and racing fourth right there on the outside. You drive it now, going up three wide, uptown swell, Queen Isabel at the rail. Cheery Hello is also out there, three deep from Tyler Town in between horses. Heading into the final turn, Keystone Wallace is stuck ahead in front. Caesars Jackpot fights back at the rail, three quarters in 126 and two. That third quarter, 26 seconds flat, and as they round the final turn and head for home on the inside, Caesars jackpot, Keystone Wallace trying to hang off at the rail, Concertina, and on the far outside, here comes Cheery Hello, forging to the front, that is Cheery Hello at Tyler Town late bid, Cheery Hello takes the three-year-old Philly Pace, mile in 155 and four, and Bruce, great drive by John Campbell there, just waiting for the exact moment to make his move, and he did it, and a perfect drive, but that's John Campbell for you. Cheery Hello, the most expensive filly of her generation. $310,000 yearling purchase. On the board this year, 19 of 21. It was not an easy trip at all. No, it was not an easy trip, but it was a tremendously impressive one. And this did not hurt her. The battle up front didn't hurt her a bit. Uh, as they were fighting here, heading for home. Now, take a look at the extreme outside. You can see her easily with the blinker hood. Once again, on the outside of Pompano's track comes the winner, roaring down through the stretch. At this point, Keystone Wallace has had enough, as you can see, and here you come, into your picture now, roaring down the lane for Campbell. He just gives a twist to the line, and Cheery Hello responds and comes on the champion that she is to win the Breeders' Crown and clinch the three-year-old pacing Philly Championship. Tyler Town was flying at the end and finished second. So the two that were behind at the three-quarter mark came roaring home. Cheery hello, your race winner. We'll be back. Back here in the winner's circle with some mighty happy folks again. John Campbell's second victory tonight, this one in uh, rather amazing fashion. Last to first. In a moment, we're going to take a look at the isolated replay of Cheery Hello. Uh, be honest with me, we right off the bat. Did you know Keystone Wallace was coming out? You gambled a little bit. You didn't know they were going to go 26 in that third quarter. Pick it up from the start, though. Well, I thought there'd be more horses leaving. I was really surprised Caesar's jackpot got to the front as easily as she did. And I didn't like the way the race broke at all. It was back last, and uh, they were strung out. And she just made up an incredible amount of ground. I... I didn't think she had the chance to win right in here. Now, John, the first two fractions are, we're pretty honest fractions, 28 and 3. Uh, Mickey took a breather on the front end going to the half in 58 and 2. Uh, a 30 second, uh, second quarter, still no panic on your face. Well, I, I couldn't get up in the race. There was uh, cover and it was way too early to go three wide at that point. Uh, I, I wished I could have got up in the race a little more, but uh, she's got an incredible burst of speed and she carried it for a long ways tonight. It was an amazing effort. Now, Bill's giving you live cover at least, so you know you're in a position that yet 
set to win. But at this point, Keystone Wallace back at the head of the field we do not see here. She is pulled to challenge Mickey McNichols, Philly. They went a 26 third quarter. You had to have a big smile on your face. Well, I, I was still back farther than I wanted to be. I wasn't that confident right in here. She had a lot of traffic to overcome, and uh, I was glad somebody took uh, a run at Mickey's Philly because uh, when she got the second quarter in 30 seconds, I didn't know if we could beat her. Now you're underway. The footing must be good on the outside of the track there. Still following cover a little bit and ready to emerge. Uh, tip off from behind Bill. Well, I followed Bill as far as long as I could, and uh, I had to go four deep, which I really didn't want to do in the middle of the turn. And it, it's a lot farther when you're out that wide, and, uh, and she just kept digging right to the wire. She is a game filly. It's only part of them coming back to you. She's going on. Yeah, she's going on. No question about that. There, Some of them are getting a little tired, but she's digging in and, and trying, and uh, it's just a tremendous effort for her to come four deep off the turn like that and win. Honest engine. You think you got it one now? Yeah, right in there. I was pretty sure she, she doesn't give up down by the wire. Once she made the lead, she, she kept on trying. All right, you sound like you tried to tell us how she was going to get beaten there. She is coming home across the wire. And another mighty happy man, John Campbell. Thank you, John. I'm going to turn here to the owners right now. Andy Grant, it's been a long time coming. The president of the Hamiltonian Society who administers the Breeders' Crown. Finally, a crown for your own. Well, thank you very much. We're extremely proud, and especially I've been involved with this Phillies family uh, for over four generations, so it's, a, it's a extra rewarding. Looking out from behind those blinkers, Anthony Padone, the co-owner. She's a beauty. I'd like to have a few more like her. <laughs> She's great. Congratulations, gentlemen. Cheery hello, the Breeders' Crown champion, three-year-old Philly Pacer. Let's go back to Bruce. Cheery hello, bred by Castleton Farm, trained by Jim Miller, driven by John Campbell, the groom Elizabeth Bridger. Congratulations to Cheery hello. And there's the happy winner circle shot, Cheery hello, the race winner. And what a tremendous performance by Cheery Hello and driver John Campbell. Mrs. Frederick L. Van Lennep, the widow of former president of Pompano Park, made the presentation. Well, Andy Grant, the owner of Cheery Hello, is much more than just the president of the Hamiltonian Society. He's a longtime owner and breeder. He owned Dance Spell and Tarport Half. He bred 1989 Hamiltonian Oaks winner, Park Avenue Kathy. But if you want to bring a smile to Andy's face, all you have to do is mention the three-year-old pacing filly, Cheery Hello.